I believe that images of women in the media are distorted and women are imprisoned by those unrealistic representation of the female body. I'm interested in taking the stereotypical representations of women and turning them upside down for their empowerment. The purpose of this presentation is to examine Renee Cox's Yo Mama photo through the feminist lens. The investigation will be conducted under the following headings, artist overview, description, analysis and interpretation. The two processes of analysis and interpretation will be merged and finally a summary of the theories that I've researched will be provided. A very brief history of Renee Cox, she's a Jamaican-born African-American artist noted for her outspoken photographs and videos that criticize societal racism and misogyny. Yo Mama, Cox's self-portrait, exemplifies her feminist critique. She states that she feels that the pictures of women in the media are inaccurate and that the unrealistic depictions of the feminine cages women, she has stated. She was born 16 October 1960 in Colgate, Jamaica and subsequently relocated to Scaresdale, New York with her family before attending Syracuse University. Cox worked as a fashion photographer in Paris and later New York after earning her undergraduate degree. Renee Cox is no stranger to provocative artwork. Cox is one of the most conscientious African-American artists of our time, both glamorous and furious. She challenges our conception of the female body, race relations, today's politics, feminine and women's roles via photography. Cox's work has been utilized to make societal criticism on a variety of topics ranging from parenting to institutionalized religion. Looking at the artwork given, it requires very little explanation, particularly when it comes to discussing the precise shot. A naked cock stands tall and straight in this legendary yo mama wearing high heels and carrying her small son in her arms. The painting honors her function as a mother while also including rather than excluding her ability to claim a role of a sexual being. This startling life-size portrait of a maternal yet sexual cox is an eye-opener that challenges society's assumptions about motherhood. Cox's Yo Mama has a strong concept of empowerment, which she accentuates by using her own naked body as a subject. Cox's presentation of gender and racial topics while inserting herself as the subject contributes to her objective of questioning the unthinking acceptance of traditional images that promote white privilege and patriarchal society. Cox's paintings challenges the conventional standards and dispel preconception about the black female figure. The absence of popular critiques and recognition of Cox as a photographer has disturbed me during my early investigation. When Cox was included or discussed in a popular critical reviews, critiques tended to portray her as self-centered and even narcissistic. Carla Williams, a photo historian, argues her work has been under-scrutinized. It hasn't gotten the critical acclaim it deserves. Nonetheless, her work is crucial, particularly in the context of the black female body. I looked into the criticism of modern white female photographers like Cindy Sherman, whose work is comparable to Cox. Sherman uses her own body in her art, but is not greeted with the same level of criticism as Cox. Cox admits that, she, that the obvious contrast in the reception of her own work and Sherman's. It's amazing that Caucasian women like Cindy Sherman use themselves and no one labels them as narcissistic. Cox adds, it is if it's their right. When I do that, it offends me as an African woman. Because there's so much to understand in this particular work, I believe it is necessary to examine Yo Mama in sections. I'll be dividing this image into various parts and analyzing and interpreting it from a feminist viewpoint, beginning with the gaze. The gaze. Her gaze is not fixed on the observer. Because she does not look directly at the audience, she may generate discomfort and doubt. It also makes the observer feel uneasy, and thus raises the question, what is she gazing at? As she holds her son, her gaze is not motherly or affectionate. She appears to be staring at the intruder or at someone who is looking at her, possibly her viewers. Cox's ambiguous look invites the visitor to examine her superwoman nakedness, which combines the androgynous sensuality with distinctively feminine sexual indications. Cox uses the opposing gaze to deliver her message while utilizing herself as the subject in her work. Cox employs the gaze in her art to express a well-founded dissatisfaction of cultural conventions in connection to her body and her perception as a black woman. 
This gaze has sexualized and objectified female figures in works made by male artists for the entertainment of primarily male audiences. The objectifying gaze hasn't always been one way. The gaze influences how women see themselves, as well as how they act and appear when observed and judged by viewers, whether male or female. Cox not only exploits the gaze tradition, but she also reclaims it. The body is full nudity. The second point of order is that the artist in the image of Yamama is entirely naked. The photographic portrayal of the black female body has only served to maintain the black body as other. Black women's genitals to determine how hypersexual or primitive enslaved women were. While artist depictions of the unclothed black female body in the past have emphasized the contrast between black female and a non-black person, her physique is the focal point. The scars of colonialism are still visible today and the black female body is still connected with them. Cox sets herself apart from modern artists by speaking directly to tradition. She appropriates well-known naked photos. She reclaims black female sexuality by doing so, using herself as the topic. Black women's nudity as a visual symbol of the sexual, licentious and economic reproduction for over three centuries. The black feminist visuality combines a sharp wit with a desire to undress, converting her body into a black female nude that defines conventional mammy and a Hottentot preconception. Comparing Yo Mama to Elizabeth Cutlet's Negro Mother and Child, limestone sculpture. Madonna and Child. Cutlet depicts a black mother and a newborn in a Negro mother and child to emphasize the love, beauty, and power of a maternal relationship. Cutlet's sculpture image of the black mother depicting a small kid calmly snuggled in the comforting arms of his mother debunks the widespread American idea that black moms were competent as mammies but lacked maternal feelings in respect to their own child. Cox does not hold her child gently in comparison to the Negro mother and child. This is completely other genre scene, a portrait of an out-of-place woman and a kid. The double picture is heightened scenario from a current everyday life in the process of giving birth to a new representation of moms by choice of black women pushing the boundaries of maternity, sexuality and employment. Furthermore, despite the numerous references to Cox's African origin, one cannot help but observe that her husband is white while the infant is of mixed race. Cox discussed her various duties as a woman, she has a child, she has a husband, she invites you to examine her body as she offers it. The interpretation of the whole image, we are reminded that she is a mother and a wife, not the flawless woman displayed for the male's enjoyment, a sense of humiliation. Clark's description of the subject as taking on is significant in regard to Cox's discourse in her art, since she employs her naked body as an agency for both subject and the maker. However, unlike the many black female subjects depicted in previous images, Cox, as the subject and the producer of the art, has discretion over how she displays herself in this position. Cox uses photography to reinterpret the story of the black female body. She uses one-of-a-kind technology to exhibit a modern rendition of the black female nude as an idealized form of the nude. Cox creates images to empower black women rather than to please men. Cox exposes the racist and patriarchal culture that continues to distort the black female body by shattering beliefs that reflect the idea of beauty frequently licked with white females. Summary of theorists relating to black feminism and then moving on to womanism. The theoretical foundation of black feminism is well known for emphasizing the multidimensional dynamic peculiar to black women's material reality and oppression. All through the 19th century, black women used the book, essay, short stories, poetry, guilt, soapboxes and photographs to emphasize that their sexual identity mixed with their racial identity to make their whole living condition and the subject of their political battles distinctive. The commitment to illuminating the intricacies of black women's lives lasted for into the 20th century, with the black feminist movement leading the way into the 1980s and 1990s. People like Angela Davis, Alice Walker, Audre Lorde and Patricia Hills were among the growing number of black women intellectuals who were dedicating their professional lives to resurrecting and developing black women's historical and literary narratives. Nonetheless, the attention is shifting from authors to artists, particularly when examining themes of imagery and representation, race and gender. 
much of contemporary study hesitates to relate African-American women's intellectual and cultural traditions of self-definition, self-evaluation, respect, self-reliance, and independent transformation and personal empowerment to the fundamental components of vision, visuality, and figurative depictions of black womanhood by African. Through the body of literature of the history of African-American women's art, making and issues of representation is small, scholars and curators dedicated to the subject have definitely demonstrated that from the 19th century to the present, African-American women, creating from various backgrounds and across a wide range of styles and mediums, are consistently produced works to confront and reject stereotypical representations of black women. The understanding that African-American women are denied status due to racial and gender discrimination is known as black feminine consciousness. African-American women are doubly handicapped in the social, economic, and political structures of the United States, having to endure the burdens of racism that confront persons of color, in addition to the different types of servitude that impede women. In almost every metric of socioeconomic well-being, income, employment, and education, African-American women trail below other race sex groupings. As a result, they face a slew of challenges, including unemployment and domestic abuse, teen pregnancy, illiteracy, poverty, starvation, all of which contributes to the overall experience with racial and gender discrimination in the United States. Second, black feminist scholars have tackled the subject of gender inequality among black people. Black women's extensive political actions, such as behind-the-scenes organizations mobilizing and fundraising, were not recognized throughout the civil rights struggle. Black men were given priority in leadership positions. As a result, black feminists acknowledged that there is a gender inequality within the black community and referred to the patriarchal structure of black male-female relationship throughout the civil rights struggle. The concept is not gender-specific and does not contain feminist principles. Nonetheless, black women in the movement incorporate black feminist values into their values. According to Faith Ringgold, black art must employ its own color, black to produce its own light, since the color represents the most urgent black truth. Shannon Barnes notes that black feminism arose as a result of black women feeling racially oppressed in women's organization and sexually oppressed in black movements. It goes on to say that while it wasn't always named that black feminism or the desire for racial and gender equality have been around for a long time. Womanism we are not white people, we are not from Europe, we are black, much like the Africans. We and the Africans shall work together to achieve a shared goal, the advancement of the black people everywhere. White women writers may be feminists, a black woman writer is more like to be a womanist. As, as a result, within Africa or elsewhere in the diaspora, the black woman writer tends to assume that white feminism is just another ruse. The fundamental difference between feminism and womanism is how they view patriarchy and how they believe it can be shred. As a result, both racism and sexism must be removed for, for black women. Black womanism is an ideology that honors black tradition and values while presenting a balanced picture of black womanhood. It is concerned with both black sexual power struggle and an international power system that oppresses black people. Its objective is for black unity, in which each black person has some authority and may be a brother, sister, father or mother to another. Womanist also investigates the past and current ties between black African and black American. It appears that males must be men, but women are not required to be like them. She can build and secure existence around her numerous offspring, both male and female, and espouses now that she has embraced men with their libidous nature. This is women in action, with Fulani cultural needs taking procedures over sexual politics. Alice Walker has always been creative. To convey a point, she chooses to a meek but not helpless woman who is diligent and set against a dreadful fate. Her heroines suffer from poverty or racism, along with the sexism and occasionally all three at the same.